everybody, Shannon Petrovich with Therapist Talks. 10 best stress busting strategies. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. We all lead super busy lives and I think it's fair to say we all deal with a mountain of stress. How do you start to sort it all out? How do you cope without feeling like you're going to lose your mind? We all know that stress can kill us, but just as importantly, stress makes us miserable. Taking care of our stress differently can radically change your life. We're going to walk through some specific strategies, so the way to get the most out of this video is to grab a pen and paper and we'll jump right in. Number one, make a list of all of your most troubling stressors. What's bugging you? What weighs on your mind constantly? What demands your attention? Put these things in categories like work or school, home, family, friends, life, chores, yada, yada, yada. Number two, next we need to clarify what the real demand is on our time and attention and what's the emotional story we are dogging ourselves with that escalates it. Some of what troubles us is the demand itself. The rest of the stress is how we are emotionally reacting to the demand. For example, the work I have due is a clear real demand on my time and attention, which is causing a certain amount of stress. But the way I am talking to myself internally about it, judging my ability to do it or do it well enough or get it done on time or how I feel about the person who asked me to do it, all of that is the added internal stress. So clarify on your stress list which are the real stressors and what's the internal emotional stress that's adding to that. Number three, recognize the internal story and stress is actually optional. I had a professor in grad school at the University of Connecticut who said many times every single lecture, pain is inevitable, misery, however, is optional. I could rewrite this to say stress is inevitable, freaking out over it is optional. We tend to add so much stress to our stress by how we internally torture ourselves emotionally. If you stop and think about each of your stressors, ask yourself what you're saying internally that's adding to that stress. Some of us are saying things like, You'll never get this done. You should just get another job or quit. Quit trying. You're useless. That's just the way it is. Others dog themselves with internal messages like, it has to be perfect or I'm just not going to do it or I'll get it done eventually. Maybe next week I'll start. I just don't feel like it right now. I'll do something else and when I get to it, I get to it. If I have to stay up all night the night before, get an extension, whatever. Others will stew in resentment with internal dialogue like, why should I do this? I hate my supervisor. I'm so sick of doing anything they say. Forget it. I'm not going to do it. All of these internal messages are debilitating. They keep us mired in the mind mud and they exacerbate the real stress by about a hundredfold. When you realize that the actual stress is the only real stress and the rest is optional and of your own making, then you can take the optional out of the equation and lessen your stress by a hundredfold. Number four, it's crucial to realize that you can do one thing at a time well or many things at a time poorly. I'm a lifelong multitasker and it turns out multitasking is a myth. Studies show we are actually doing a bunch of things poorly and causing ourselves a lot more stress by bouncing from thing to thing to thing. It takes on average 11 minutes to get back on focus after a distraction. So when we're multitasking, we're actually giving some of our attention to one thing and then continually out of focus as we're mired in distraction after distraction. Turns out we're really never doing any of it well, um, as well as if we took one thing, did it, then moved on to the next thing. The simple truth is you can lessen your stress a great deal if you refuse to let yourself scatter in several different directions at once and just let yourself focus on one thing at a time. If several things come at you at once, write down the other things on a list and get to them later. Number five, begin the day with a plan. As a supervisor, a strategy I used to help lessen the multitasking I was constantly being asked to do was that I started every morning with my door closed, I got organized for the day and I made a plan. Specifically, we need to map out what is immediate, what's important, what's foundational, foundational and what's visionary. The immediate is on your list for today. The important you'll get to if you can. The foundational is, a, is stuff that you want to do to build on your future. And the visionary is stuff you dream about. When you divide your demands this way, you can get focused and stay on track for the day. 
When we're proactive, we feel more in control and less freaked out. When we put our tasks on paper and then check them off as we do them, we feel more in control. Then regroup at lunchtime and see what you've accomplished and what still needs your attention that day. Number six, breathe. I know it's cliche, but it's science too, so hear me out. If you think of your stress on a one to 10 scale with one being totally calm and 10 being completely overwhelmed and freaking out, the more time you spend between one and five, the more productive you are. When we're emotionally distraught, our thought processes are actually diminished. Our ability to be focused or productive is diminished. And the less focused and productive we are, the more overwhelmed we become. And we're soon in a self-escalating spin out. So breathe, do one thing at a time and do it with a one to five calmness level. If you get to six, take a break, take a walk. Remind yourself that nothing good happens between six and 10, nothing. Number seven, learn to create your best work rest cycles. Take 10 minute breaks every hour or two, depending on how you're doing. If you're getting bogged down, take a break. Make sure your breaks are healthy and rejuvenating though. Go outside, breathe, stretch, chat with a friend in the break room. Don't get on your phone, check social media, Facebook, all that stuff. Give your mind a rest from engaging. This is also science. When we rest our minds and allow space, we're more productive and creative. Nature in particular is vital to rejuvenating us. So if you can take a brisk walk outside or do some stretching outdoors, that's the best. Then after 10 minutes, jump back into work. You'll be amazed at how much more productive you feel when you practice these strategies. Number eight, learn to reframe, rename, and rework the stresses that bug you, the stresses that are chronic, or the tiresome things in your life. So find some great podcasts or audible books to make your commute more fulfilling and less frustrating. When picking up after your kids for the umpteenth time or doing the pile of dishes or cleaning your apartment at the end of a grueling week at work, turn on music and dance around while you work. One of my favorite pieces of science is that listening to music has been shown to illuminate and re-energize the positive chemistry and activity in our brains. When we then sing to the music, our brains are even more lit up. And when we play an instrument and sing with others, it's like a New Year's Eve in Times Square kind of explosion in our heads. So find ways to make things that you've thought of as drudgery more fun and fulfilling. When you reframe these types of stressors into a more positive thing, you'll feel less stressed by them. Number nine, be your own best friend. Be encouraging and not negative. Notice and change how you talk to yourself and you'll notice how you feel differently. This includes giving yourself an internal, yay, you did it, every time you accomplish something, even if it's just cleaning the house or loading the dishwasher. Number 10, finally, reinforce it all day each day by wrapping up your day with a self-assessment. How did you do with managing your stresses today? How, did you list your stressors? Did you notice the internal freak out voice and calm it down? Did you organize your day? Did you breathe? Did you do one thing at a time? Did you take healthy breaks? Did you make the drudgery fun? And did you celebrate each success? We all know that stress can kill us, but just as importantly, stress can make us miserable. Taking charge of your stress can radically change your life. If you appreciated this video, please hit like, please share it on your social media, and please subscribe to this channel, and then you'll get notifications when I put out another video. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you again soon.